In 2010, geneticists finally finished sequencing the Neanderthal genome. The same year, they compared the genome of that of modern humans and confirmed something that had been hypothesized for decades. That Neanderthals and modern humans interbred, leading to 1-3% to Neanderthal DNA in modern humans. This was shocking for many. We are part ancient human. Later in 2010, it was found that many modern humans have DNA from another human species, the Denisovans. Populations in Southeast Asia can have up to 5% Denisovan DNA. Furthermore, it was found that this DNA has very real effects on our health. Denisovan DNA helps Tibetans thrive in the low oxygen, high altitude environments of the Himalayas. Anthropology came to understand that these ancient humans in many ways still live on in us. And in 2020, geneticists announced that they discovered evidence of another yet unknown hominin present in West African populations, making up between 2-19% to 19 of their genome. This has led to tons of confusion about who these hominids actually were and just how much of their genome survives in modern people. So today, using scientific research, I'm here to break down who the ghost hominids were. First of all, what is a ghost lineage? All this means is a species or population that has contributed to our DNA, but we don't have any fossils or skeletal remains. As of now, archaeologists have not discovered any fossils of this archaic population in West Africa, leading to this population being named Hominid X or just the Ghost Hominids. But this is far from the only ghost population in our genome. With recent advances in genetics, researchers have identified large segments of the genomes of modern humans that come from other distant populations and even other species. We know that these populations existed and that they bred with our ancestors, but we don't know exactly when, where, or whom. And this brings us to the discovery of the Denisovans. In 2008, archaeologists discovered fragments of bones from a cave in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. The teeth were massive, clearly not belonging to Homo sapiens. And when the DNA was extracted, it was clear that this was an entirely new lineage of ancient humans separate from our species. As mentioned earlier, this DNA was also found in modern East Asians. But as for the ghost hominids, we only know of them through DNA analysis. No fossils have been found, but remarkably we were able to learn an awful lot about them from our genomes. So let's talk about what the paper actually found. Genetics is extremely complicated, so I will try to explain it the best I can. This study looked at four present-day West African populations. This included the Yoruba, the Isan, West Gambians, and the Mende. They compared the DNA of modern West Africans with the DNA of Neanderthals and Denisovans. The idea was to see whether certain genes in living Africans were unique to our species, or whether they came from a much older ancestor that humans and Neanderthals once shared. To do this, they looked at changes in the DNA called SNPs. They are just places where one letter in the DNA code is different. If humans and Neanderthals had split and never mixed again, and if these genes were just evolving normally, the pattern of these SMPs should look even and smooth. But that's not what the data showed. Instead, the pattern formed a U-shape. That means that there are way more rare versions of these genes and very common versions, with fewer in the middle than expected. They tested every possible reason this could happen, like natural selection or random mutation bias, and the pattern still remained. The simplest explanation is that modern West Africans carry a small amount of DNA from another ancient human group. This population must have split off even earlier than our split with Neanderthals. In other words, part of the ancestry of West Africans today comes from a completely different unknown hominid yet to be identified in the fossil record. So how much of their DNA comes from these hominids? The estimates vary between 2 to 19% of their genome. But do people really have up to 19% DNA from another hominid? Well, if you look at figure 2b, you can see that 2 to 19% is just the estimate. The mean average is around 9 to 12%, but they clearly state this likely ranges from 6.6 to 7%. So 19% is just the upper estimate, as 2% is the lowest. 6 to 7% is an accurate estimate. In comparison, Europeans have between 1 to 2% Neanderthal DNA, East Asians have 2 to 3% Neanderthal DNA, and some populations living in Southeast Asia, such as the Melanesians, have between 4 to 6% Denisovan DNA. So 6 to 7% is quite high, but not completely out of the range of other populations. It is also important to note that this admixture is specific to West Africa. The paper found that these portions of the genome were not present in two South African groups nor two Central African groups. It's possible other groups have these signals, but as of now it seems to be limited to West Africa specifically. So who were these hominids? The paper calls them archaic hominins, but the authors of the paper use this term to refer to a population that diverged prior to our split with Neanderthals and Denisovans. 
Without fossil evidence, it is hard to tell, but we do know some information about when they diverge from our lineage. Genetic evidence suggests that they branched off between 360,000 and 975,000 years ago. This is right around the time our last common ancestor between Neanderthals and Denisovans split off. These hominids likely lived in West or Northwest Africa, and our lineage specifically arose across Central, East, and Southern Africa. Our last common ancestors with Neanderthals and Denisovans seem to have lived across East Africa and into the Middle East. This lineage would eventually split into three unique branches, all while the ghost hominins were evolving separately in East Africa. As their species began to spread around other parts of Africa, we eventually came across these hominids. They would have looked like the typical hominin from the Middle Pleistocene. Big-brained, tall stature, complex social structure, and sophisticated tools. This has led some to call them the African Neanderthals, and this is a pretty fitting way to understand them. They were just another branch of hominids doing the same thing that we were doing in the Middle Pleistocene. And they may have looked like the Bodo or Broken Hill Cranium, likely having large brows and no chin. Plenty of stone tools made by these hominins are found in West Africa. These tools are more or less just as technologically complex as the tools used by Neanderthals or Homo sapiens. Our species would inevitably spread into their territory and evidently breed over a long period of time. The fact that we bred could be seen as evidence that these hominins were biologically and culturally similar enough to merge cohesively. The earliest interbreeding likely occurred as far back as 260,000 years ago. This hybrid population would exist in the region for quite some time. But what is important to understand is that the ancestors of modern West Africans likely didn't directly mate with these ghost hominins. DNA evidence suggests that roughly 43,000 years ago, the ancestors of modern West Africans migrated into the region and mated with a population of Homo sapiens that had arrived there during the Middle Pleistocene. Meaning that 43,000 years ago, the ghost hominins were long gone, but their genetics were still present in the Homo sapiens that lived in West Africa during this time. This is roughly around the same time the ancestors of Europeans and Asians were mating with other hominins. The genes or species inherited from these hominins have very real effects on modern populations. But there is a real fallacy involved with thinking that these genes are in some way primitive or less evolved. These other human species were no less advanced than Homo sapiens. They all just lived well over 40,000 years ago giving us this impression. In reality, many of these species created large, sophisticated tools and were extremely adaptable. And when we mated with them, we inherited their genes, and over the next thousands of years, the harmful genes were bred out, while the genes that provided some sort of benefit were retained. These genetic contributions were most often genotypical, not phenotypical, meaning we cannot see these genes on the surface, but they have very real effects within the body. As mentioned earlier, modern Tibetans inherited genes from Denisovans that helped them thrive in high-altitude environments. So what effects do the genes of the ghost hominins have on West Africans? They found that they had high frequencies of NF1, a tumor suppressor gene, the other genes all had to do with big words that I will not pretend I know, but they are important nonetheless. There are certainly other genes that these populations have from these hominids that we do not fully understand yet, but it is clear that introgression leads to positive adaptation. Hopefully we will find some actual fossils from this species so we can genetically test them. This could help us clear up many questions. The Middle Pleistocene is often called the muddle in the middle, because it contains many gaps and questions about what hominin was where and who they were related to. If we look at the world 300,000 years ago, we know that just in Africa there were our ancestors in the east, Homo naledi in the south, and these ghost hominins in the west. Homo naledi is even more bizarre than the ghost species. They were small-bodied, retaining adaptations for tree climbing. It is hypothesized that they split off from our lineage over a million years ago, perhaps from Homo erectus. It is even possible that they descend from late Australopithecines who mated with Homo erectus. Whatever the case, they proved that small-brained hominids were able to coexist alongside our ancestors without there necessarily being competition. But during the Middle Pleistocene, there were many other lineages that existed outside of Africa. Of course, the Neanderthals lived across Europe. But archaeologists have also come across strange remains from the Levant known as the Nesher Ramla hominins. They seem to be closely related to Neanderthals and our own lineage. It's possible they belong to their own unique lineage or are a combination between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, we really don't know. Moving east into Asia, there were the Denisovans, but also late surviving Homo erectus. These Homo erectus have been known for over a century due to fossil remains, but the late survival of this species alongside Denisovans has led to many questions. Why did some hominins evolve into large-brained forms, while others retain the relatively primitive morphology of Homo erectus? 
Well, the genetics of Denisovans confirms that they bred with a super archaic hominin which branched off over a million years ago. 1.1 to 1.4 million years ago, in fact. This suggests that the late surviving erectus in the region were likely remnants of some of the first hominins to leave Africa. Homo erectus first left Africa around 1.8 million years ago, spreading around Europe and into East Asia. This lineage may also be ancestral to the two hobbit species from Southeast Asia, Homo floresiensis and Homo luzonensis. When our ancestors finally made it to the region, Homo erectus may have still been present and we know that at least three other species were. You have to wonder, do modern humans in East Asia have DNA from erectus or Homo floresiensis? Well, we don't have evidence that the late surviving erectus directly bred with the ancestors of East Asians, but they may have indirectly gotten some of this DNA through Denisovans. As for Homo floresiensis, researchers have not been able to extract DNA from their remains, so it is too early to tell. As we continue to look and prod further at human genomes, we'll discover pieces and fragments that came from other species and archaic populations. Fossils that have already been discovered will continue to be tested for genetic material, and the advent of new techniques will allow further research. It would be incredible if we could find ancient DNA of even older species such as Australopithecus, Homo habilis, and even Paranthropus. DNA has truly revolutionized paleoanthropology, and best believe you will be hearing more about it in the next couple of years. But now, let's spend a moment debunking some false claims about this study. Many have misinterpreted this study to claim that it debunks the out-of-Africa theory. Pseudo-intellectuals have stated that modern humans actually evolved in Europe, and then migrated into Africa and bred with the hominins. Clearly, as we have discussed today, evidence of this archaic hominin admixture is only present in modern West Africans specifically while our species mainly appeared in East Africa. I get comments all the time saying the out of Africa theory has been debunked, but not once has any of these commenters supported their claims with peer reviewed research. All four of these points definitively prove that our lineage originated in Africa and no peer reviewed research has proven the contrary. The truth is there is a small but vocal group of people who are uncomfortable with the fact that their ancestors ultimately came from sub-Saharan Africa. Pseudo-intellectuals play to this and create false but persuasive content claiming that our African origins have been debunked. This study has played a central role in many of their arguments, and unfortunately it has caused many of them to claim that sub-Saharan Africans are up to 20% Homo erectus. These claims are of course motivated by prejudice, and as we have learned today are by no means based in fact. Only some populations of West Africans have up to 7% ancestry from a species that split off an estimated 625,000 years ago. To reiterate, every human on Earth has ancestry from ancient hominids. Every human outside of Africa, and most populations within Africa have ancestors from Neanderthals which split off from our lineage over 500,000 years ago. So if you ever encounter claims that Sub-Saharan Africans are 20% Homo erectus, you know that these claims are not only incorrect, but are most likely being used in an attempt to insult people of African descent. In reality, the modern humans with the least DNA from other human species are found in Eastern and Southern Africa, of course the place where we originated. Clearly as I have broken down, ancient human DNA in modern humans is not a bad thing, it's actually amazing. We took the best genes from our resilient ancestors to better adapt to our world. You are the result of 7 million years of hominin evolution, and it's time to start acting like it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss out on another upload. Seriously, please drop a like because these AI channels are killing me. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Arrivederci.